Hello everyone, in this video I will go over my solution for the problem named Pull Your Luck taken from the Nebius Welcome Round. This problem is an excellent problem which will teach you the basics of modular arithmetic. So in this problem we are basically given a roulette wheel consisting of n sectors numbered from 0 to n minus 1. The winning sector is determined by a static arrow pointing to one of the n sectors. The sector's indices go in the numbers from 0 to n minus 1 and it's like a circle. So this means that i plus 1 is the next sector after i for 0 to n minus 2 and 0 is the next sector after n minus 1 because after n minus 1 the circle is complete and you come back to the starting point. Now the player is allowed to pull the triggering handle themselves and cause the wheel to spin and the method in which the wheel spins is outlined below. Initially, the player gives a pull with force equal to some integer f. The wheel advances by f. So in f seconds, it advances by f sectors. Then in the next second, it advances by f minus 1 sectors. Then in the third second, it advances by f minus 2 sectors and so on until it reaches 3, 2, 1 and then 0. So basically the wheel advances a total of f plus f minus 1 plus f minus 2 plus all the way up till 2, 1 and then 0. And this sum from 0 till f is given by f into f plus 1 by 2 because it's the sum of the first f natural numbers. So this is the value by which the wheel advances. Now we know that the Roulet's arrow currently points at sector x and you can use any force between 1 to p. So this basically means that f should belong to the range 1 to p and the starting point is x. So we want to figure out whether starting from x using some force f belonging to the range 1 to p we can get to the 0 sector whether we can reach the winning sector of 0. So this basically means that we need to make sure that x plus the distance the wheel moves forward which is f into f plus 1 by 2 this quantity turns out to be 0 so this basically turns out to be 0 when divided by n so this is the key observation for this problem the idea of modular arithmetic or the idea of finding the remainder when dividing a number by another number. So what this equation basically tells us is that if you start from x and if you advance by f into f plus 1 by 2 the resulting value should be divisible by n. So n divides or n is a factor of x plus f into f plus 1 by 2. This is the condition which needs to be satisfied and you should get used to this notation because it shows up a lot in number theory problems. So even if you don't know this notation, it's fine. You, I'm basically saying that n should be a factor of x plus f into f plus 1 by 2 or the remainder when x plus f into f plus 1 by 2 is divided by n, that remainder should be 0 because why, why should it be 0? Because we go back to the 0th wheel so since we go back to the 0th wheel, the remainder when you're dividing by n should be 0. If, if, if they mention that the winning sector was, let's say, sector number 3, then it, it would have been 3 instead. So if they mention that the winning sector was 3, we would have to go back to the third wheel and we would say 3 is the remainder. 3 should be the remainder. But here they are saying that the winning sector is 0, that's why 0 should be the remainder. Or in other words, we need to ensure that n divides this number. So this number should be a multiple of n. That's what we need to ensure. And we need to print yes whether whether x, whether there's some f belonging to 1 to p such that x plus f into f plus 1 by 2 is a multiple of n. So if there is such, such an integer f lying in the range 1 to p, we print yes, otherwise we print no. Now, 
an obvious solution is to iterate for all f going from 1 to p. So for each f belonging to 1 to p, we can check whether this term x plus f into f plus 1 by 2 is going to be if, if this is 0 mod n. So if n percentage this, uh, if this percentage n is equal to 0, then we'll set the flag to be true. Otherwise, the flag will remain false. And in the end, we just print flag. So if flag is true, we print yes, there is some f. Otherwise, we print no, there's no such f. And this algorithm is an O of p algorithm, which will time out when p is very large. However, the key idea remains the same. You will want to check whether some f exists in a range such that such that the remainder when dividing x plus f into f plus 1 by 2, when you divide that number by n, if it's 0 or not, that's what you want to check. So instead of iterating from 1 to p, you should iterate over a smaller range. And that's where our next key idea comes into the picture. The first key observation was this observation of remainder when dividing by n. Because when you have a circle, you always take remainder by n. When you have a clock to find out the time, you take remainder mod 12. Here you have a roulette wheel of, of size n, so you take the remainder mod n. And you want to get to the zeroth wheel, that's why you take the remainder should be 0 mod n. That's the first key observation. The second reduction to, to make to optimize the solution relies on the fact that these remainders repeat. So let me explain with the help of a few examples. Let's first write down the expression and let's look at it carefully. We have this number which we want to be 0 mod n. We, we want the remainder when divided by n to be 0. Now let's let's simplify the expression a bit. Let's take another let's take another expression for simplicity because over here we are dividing by 2 as well and dividing by 2 doesn't work well with remainder. So let's let's take another example. Let's say we just have f into f plus 1 mod n. So let's say we just had this instead of f plus 1 by 2. If this was the expression, then the key idea is that if you increase f by n, so if you make this x plus f plus n into f plus n plus 1, if you increase f by n, then the remainder when this is divided by n is going to be the same as the remainder when this is divided by n. So what I'm basically saying is that on adding n to f, the remainder remains the same. So you don't need to check for large numbers. You only need to check for numbers from 0 till n. So you only need to check for f belonging to 0 till n minus 1. Because if you check for, if you're checking for 0, and if you're checking for n, it will have the same remainder when divided by n. If you check for 1, so 1 is congruent to n mod n, 0 is congruent to, 0 is congruent to n, 1 is congruent to n plus 1, 2 is congruent to n plus 2, all the way up till n minus 1 is congruent to n plus n minus 1. And basically, the remainders, the remainders repeat in cycles of n. So because the remainders repeat in cycles of n, you don't need to check for all possible remainders. You just need to check for n possible remainders and you can just check for the smallest n possible remainders. So instead of looping over f going from 1 to p, you just loop f going from 1 to n or going from 0 to n minus 1. E even 1 to n is fine. Just loop for all f going from 1 to n. Now the only issue with that logic if you, if you try to code this logic, if you just do for each f in, in the range 1 to n, 
you you will get an arrow i tried that i submitted it i got an arrow and the reason for that arrow is the, is is this division by 2 over here this division by 2 makes makes this idea a bit incorrect and you can probably guess the solution but i'll i'll say it explicitly the key reduction is you should go for f going uh, f should iterate over all values going from 1 to 2n because when you increase f by 2n and then divide by 2 you're essentially increasing f by n and this equality holds by the same logic that increasing by n doesn't change the value of the remainder by that same logic so by the same logic on the right side that if you increase f by n the remainders remain the same and when you multiply them they remain the same that's why the that's why the remainders don't change when you add n by that same logic when you add 2n and divide by 2 the remainders remain the same and we exploit that property to change the loop from 1 to 2n instead of 1 to n and over here instead of iterating from 1 to p you just iterate for 1 to 1 to minimum of p comma 2n because if p is small obviously you want to go only till p but if p is big you only want to go till 2n so you go till the smaller of these two quantities for for each value f in that range and you just check whether x plus f into f plus 1 by 2 is is divisible by n if it is you set flag to be true otherwise flag is false and in the end if flag is true you print yes otherwise you print no and that's the full solution if you have a doubt regarding why any of the equations are true just leave that specific equation in the comments below and i'll elaborate it more but this is the gist of the solution and i'll show you the code which implements the same idea so in the code for each test case i take in the values of n x and p so n is the circular roulette table size of the circular roulette table and x and p are the are other values given the problem statement is is basically the flag in the end depending on de depending on whether the flag is true or not we print yes or no i is basically the value of f so for each f going from 1 till 2 into n or p whichever one is smaller we will check whether f into f plus 1 by 2 plus x is divisible by n or not if it's divisible by x we print uh, if it's divisible by n we print yes so we set the flag to be true otherwise we print no so initialized to no if we get any true value we will print yes otherwise if we get all false values this the flag will remain false so we will print no and you can verify that this code gets accepted so i hope you like this problem and my solution if you have any doubts in any part of the solution do leave them in the comments down below and if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up thank you